our drawing we did last weekend for the first Friday event. Uh, this is Heather, his foster mom, and we are setting up for our first um, session with, with Alex here. Um, Heather, you want to kind of give everybody a little history on where he's, where he's been, where he's come from, and um, what's going on with him now? Alex came to the rescue from an animal hoarder situation up in Alexandria last, like, August, I believe, or, yeah, they, they took possession of him in August. I got him in September, like, the first week of September. Um, he's been with me ever since, and he's got, I don't know, he's got some animal re reactivity issues, some anxiety, which we're trying to work on. But he's a super good boy. He tries really hard. So those of the you have not noticed yet, Alex is blind. Uh, so he solely depends on his nose. Uh, and that's going to make training a little bit, a little bit different, a little bit more challenging. But there's ways that we can do it. Um, the type of training that I'd like to focus on is being able any, to build his confidence, uh, build grit, optimism, to be able to. to does get that scent of another dog that he doesn't automatically uh, react the way he does, which is yelp, scared, uh, it acts like he's actually being hurt. Uh, what the reaction we're going to try to build in is a reaction of turn in and check in with you first and then say, okay, what's our reaction? And then that's where your mechanics of him not of course, being able to see, but you're using his, his nose to be able to guide him and say, well, no, we're not going to, we're not going to worry about this one. Or yeah, we're going to completely ignore it. Or no, let's go over and say hi to this one and see, and see how things are going. And building that bond and that trust, be able to work through those those scary types of things. <laughs> I love these kids. I know I will get you more. He and Ted will get you more. And he is a sweet oh, He's a doll, baby. <laughs> I love him. So uh, <laughs> some of the things that we're going to do, um, there's a exercise that's called bowling. And what that is, is that we're going to set up some, some objects that he has to pick treats or food up out of. And as he goes, he gets them. They're going to knock over. Okay. Pretty simple in our eyes. Uh, but to them, what it is, it's novelty crashing around. And that's what we, we kind of want him to do. Is you'll notice it at first. Um, that it'll, it'll crash down and he'll kind of back away, maybe scoot, and kind of use his nose. And what we're really trying to do is bridge that gap between his brain and his nose. Because uh, that's... It's there. He's. I would say he's probably in more t in touch with it than most dogs uh, that that we come across. But he doesn't know how to use it, and that's what we're going to kind of teach him is is to be able to, to to narrow out that. Okay, this is this is when I should be be kind of scared because there's that scent in there, and they they can decipher that. You know, another dog, a person, whatever it may be. Uh, that is a, a dog's number one learning learning tool is their nose. Uh, number two is going to be movement which that one we're going to basically have to nix. He can't see the way that we move. Uh, normally a dog would, would learn uh, your, your scent first, and then the way that you move your body when you talk, the way that you walk and you move your body, the way that you laugh, the way that you're mad. Your body has certain certain ways and, and body language that it, that it portrays, and that's what they pick up on. And then third would be tone. That's the sound of your voice. That's the, you know, they can hear, you know, you laughing from down the hall and they're like, oh yeah, that's, that's mom. I know who that is. Um, it takes them so, a long time to get to that point. Uh, so they, de they depend on their nose and they depend on movement first. But like I said, we're going to be doing a little different um, because we don't have the movement working in our favor. So we're going to have to use our nose and that's basically then directly the tone, uh, which we can do. Uh, it's just going to take a little time and, it's, you know, just having a little patience to be able to wait for that light bulb to go off in his brain and say, oh, I got it. This is what you're asking me to do here. All right, if you want to
is finished with his first session. We uh, got a lot of information in there. Um, but before we go, um, I do want to remind everybody that Alex is adoptable. He is up for adoption. And Heather is going to give you the information if you're interested um, where you would need to contact. Yeah, um, Alex is with, uh, available for adoption through Blue Rest Doberman Rescue. They are based out of Kentucky. Um, Melissa is the girl who runs the rescue. Um, and I feel bad because I don't remember her last name. That's okay. Um, I'll post the information <laughs> on the bottom of the video. <laughs> and uh, she said, go ahead, if you're interested, go ahead and fill out an adoption form. That way they can get the ball rolling, make sure you're you know, available to be approved. And then uh, set up the time you can come meet him. Okay. Now, if, if I was looking to ad adopt a dog like, like Alex, what is the ideal home environment that we're looking for? Right now, we have Alex listed as an uh, only dog, um, no small children, um, because he does get nervous. Um, Probably no cats at this point. Yeah, he does have a pretty good you know, prey drive, so he will chase a cat, he will chase squirrels, he will chase rabbits. Mm -hmm. um, so, none of those, preferably. Um, but other than that, he's a super super good guy. I mean, he loves his crate. He does his thing in the morning. He's your typical Velcro boy. You know, he wants to be with his people. Good, good. Um, he's a happy Dover boy, good. you know? Yeah. He's beautiful. All right. Well, that will conclude us. Um, any questions or anything, just let us know and we'll keep you up to date on his uh, progression.